Thanks for coming today. Um, Braxton Miller update. He's uh, uh, down uh, getting surgery. I think he met with a doctor. I got a text this morning from him. And he met with, uh, I believe, Dr. Andrews today. And surgery is set for tomorrow. Is that correct, Jerry? That's correct. And um, uh, JT and Cardell have responded very well. Uh, the, the biggest issue I see or, or the positive we have right now is uh, we we have a good one and two group of wide receivers that are just rotating out. Uh, there's really not a set one or two. We'll list a starting depth chart, I imagine, tomorrow. Uh, but the nice thing is that uh, you, I can see six that will be game ready uh, for us. Um, and I'll answer any questions for you. Front row left, Lori. Uh, you had said last year that one of the pivotal moments in your season was the injury to Christian Bryant. I know the circumstances are different, but did any, anything about the way that played out inform how you've handled Braxton's injury? Oh, I think uh, getting young, getting younger, the, the issue was last year, and, and I, I expressed that with our staff, I think I probably said it publicly too, is that you got to get young players ready to play. And uh, sometimes you'll say, well, they don't quite know what they're doing. That's why they call you coach. Get them to know what they're doing. And uh, I'm really fortunate this year, and they're a lot of pressure on our coaches to get guys ready to play. So if you have a talent, not knowing what to do is not, that's not acceptable. So that that's the biggest thing I took out of the last year. Do you have any relationship with Keenan Reynolds? I only ask because he, he says he was a big fan of yours and wanted to play for you with the Gators. Keenan Reynolds. The Navy quarterback? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm a big fan of his too. Um, I didn't know him coming out of high school. And uh, I just know yeah. that. Navy coaches and some people I've talked to think he's the best that they've ever had, which that tells you, takes your breath away a little bit. Doug, front row left. Urban, you've had a couple of different battles uh, in the preseason. Where do you stand with the other two spots in the offensive line and the other starting corner spot? Left guard's not uh, named yet, and it's not because of ability. It's just uh, we haven't, one of the guy hasn't separated himself. So in the hunt are still Joel Hill, Billy Price, uh, Tony Underwood. They're still in the hunt. Uh, who is the other position? Center. Center is going to be uh, probably be Jacoby and uh, um, Chad Lindsay. Will uh, we haven't named a center uh, starter with that yet either? So those are two. But it's once again, there's it's still because the battles are going on. The other corner. Spot? The other corner. It's Eli and Gary on. We haven't sep they haven't separated themselves yet either, which is a good sign. They'll both play. So is that to have competition still in game week? Is that? Oh, is great. that good or is that not good? It's, if they're bad players, you got a problem. You know, if they're really good players and, and they're just battling and battling and battling, it means they're both going to play, then that's that's kind of normal this time of year. Like, I couldn't tell you the starting receivers either right now. Who, who's that group? Uh, you got Evan and Devin, Evan, Evan Spencer, Devin Smith. Uh, you got Dontre Wilson, you got Jalen Marshall, you got Mike Thomas, and you got Corey Smith. And all of them could march in, and they all deserve playing time. So it's just magic who breaks the huddle the first. Second row middle, Bob. For as long as you've done this, do you ever have a – does your anxiety level ever change before the first game based on graduation losses or last-second injuries, quarterbacks? Or well, it's who you play a little bit. You know, and that's – I have such respect for the United States Naval Academy. And, and, uh, and you know, I played them when I was at Notre Dame every year. And then we played Air Force every year. I was at uh, at Utah and Colorado State, so I just and it's it's a uh, typical back uh, when Air Force was uh, winning the Commander in Chief Trophy all the time, like Navy does now. It's just you know incredible uh, uh, efficiency on offense and that odd three-four defense where they're all over the place. So it's with good players, and so that's there's a little I use the term use the term anxiety a little bit more this year just because of who we're playing. And the quarterback and the, the skill that they have. Does your does your excitement? Are you do you still get excited the first week like you did oh, yeah. ten years ago or whatever? Yeah, yeah I get excited if, once again if you have good players, good team, and I'll fake it sometimes if we don't have a good team. <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you this: I think we got a good team. Back row, Dave. Uh, Coach, you mentioned JT and Cardell in the same breath there when you came out. When JT got the job, he was edged past uh, Cardell for the number two job. How close is that? And are, is, you go into the season as, as him as your solid number one guy? That's well, pretty close. You know, it was thrust upon us rather quickly because we kind of, you know, in my heart, I thought Braxton would be ready to go. You know, I didn't envision this. And so I thought, man, this is going to be a really close battle for the backup spot. And uh, But JT is the starting quarterback, but it's not a big 
There's not a big separation. Could you see a scenario where Cardell would come in in these first couple of games if JT's not doing what you'd like to sure. see? Sure. Coach, the middle linebacker, is it Curtis Grant's job all the way, or is Raekwon McMillan possibly pushing him for a starting role? Or could you just yeah, I'll, I'll announce captains here, too. That brings that up. Um, uh, Curtis is starting linebacker. The good thing is, once again, I think we've recruited some depth. You're going to see some rotation in this first game, including that position. You're going to see some guys rotate a little bit at the D-line as well, which you need, and then same at the corner spot. So, so, uh, uh, but as Curtis is a starting middle linebacker. Uh, we voted captains, and Braxton Miller was uh, uh, a high vote getter. And um, Jeff Hireman, Michael Bennett. Duran Grant, which is a great success story, his his turnaround, and, and uh, Curtis Grant, which is here, here's a guy that, uh, once again, that's one of the great things about what we do for a living is to see young people grow up. And boy, has Curtis Grant done a nice job. Front row, Tim. Yeah, Urban, now speaking of Jeff Hireman, is he 100%? Is he ready to go? Is uh, Are y'all going to be reluctant to play him? I mean, just where, where does he stand? Yeah, he's not 100% yet. But uh, we anticipate he'll be ready to go. It's just going to be volume, and that's what we're dealing with right now. And I guess uh, you know you've talked about Nick Vanette before, but how much maturity growth have you seen in him just in the last six months? Yeah, and in, in the last month, he's one of the most improved. He's in the Tommy Shut category. The the Nick Vanette, Curtis Grant, Duran Grant, those are all just over the top, uh, most improved guys. Nick Vanette's had as good as camp at tight end uh, at tight end as I've I've seen. Which is great for him to, to see him do that. Todd, Urban, you haven't said a whole lot about how JT's responded. Life's kind of really changed for him, you know, in, in about ten days. You know, his, the last time he played a, in a football game, he was playing in a high school stadium. Now he's going to start in an NFL stadium here in a couple of days. Just how has he responded mentally to, to everything? Well, that'd be a good question for Tom Herman. You know, I just watch what I watch and spend some time with him. He's a He's Geitenish, man. He's, he's, he's a calm guy that had a very good practice today, like really good practice today, and very business-like about his approach. You know, he's not, a, he's not someone you have to watch to see their demeanor because it's, it's the same as it was two weeks ago. And I, we all know what's coming down the barrel at him, uh, but he's handled it very well. It's hard for you to divide up uh, practice snaps with one and two. Obviously, you want to give him as many snaps with the ones as, as you can, but like you said earlier, the guy who's number two is not real far behind. Well, it's not. It hasn't been hard because they're both. You know, the thing that you have to keep in mind: both of them got every rep. You know, in spring and in fall. So we've divided them. You know, JT's getting majority of number one reps, but it's. You know, it's it's not. This has not been thrust upon us. You, you know, you read these stories like you heard about the the. You know, I love, we coached against Sam Bradford in the title game. What a great player when you know when someone something like that happens. When he was getting all the reps, that's the hard thing. And, you know, obviously wish him the best. He's a great player. Far left, Matt. Um, just wondering with the way Navy runs offense and as effective as they can be, ball control, does that, how does that affect your game plan? Does it affect your offense? How you call yes, it, it does. Uh, you know, I've been working through that, talked to some people who've coached in these situations. You know, as a head coach, I don't believe I've been in this situation facing a team quite like this. So I just I've talked to a lot of my now about two or three of my colleagues that have been in this and and there are some uh, things game game management uh, areas where we're going to adjust a little bit. Far right here, front row, Austin. Urban, I mean, when you guys a couple of years ago started looking for a quarterback to recruit and settle on JT as maybe the first you know guy signed at Ohio State, what was it that initially struck you about him, and made him a guy worth recruiting? Oh, it was, uh, he, he went to lead 11, and I remember we talked to some people that were there, and his competitive spirit is something that, and, and you can see it now, is it just kept coming back to us, especially at that position. And one thing nowadays, quarterbacks are committing so early that you're not getting, normally we, you know, back in the Tebow, Cam Newton, uh, Denard Robinson area when I was at Florida, you, you know, they went to your camp, you evaluated them, you watched them, and, and now it's, kids are, you know, saying, well, I'm going to go here because you haven't offered us yet, and I'm a sophomore. And you know, those are, Coaches are put in really, really tough situations, and so JT was a guy that we were was one of our guys. And then, uh, then we had those camp where we kids wouldn't come to camp or for whatever reason, and then we just did as much homework as we could, and he decided he's the one that we wanted. It's been the last couple of years trying to bring out more vocal leadership in Braxton. JT, is it fair to say he's more natural at that? 
A little bit. Yeah, he's not a loud guy. He's a very confident guy, though. Yeah, he's he, a lot like our previous quarterback, uh, Kenny. Very, uh, they kind of migrate to him. Far left, Rusty. Um, Urban is Ezekiel Elliott full go now. Is he's he full go. Could you talk about the packing order? Yep. That's very odd. Rod and uh, Rod and Briante had a great camp. Warren Ball has uh, been um, – he had a slight concussion, so he hasn't practiced the last few days. And you have uh, four guys, uh, Curtis Samuel, Zeke, uh, Rod Smith, and Briante Dunn have all had uh, – they're very involved in kicking game, which is you can't carry the ball unless you're involved in kicking game. And, and they're all very involved. Is this a good first step that you're playing on a neutral field rather than playing on somebody's home field? You can kind of – I'd much rather play right there. No one asks, though. But under the circumstances, will this be a good way for you to kind of gauge yeah. how everybody's handling things? Yeah, I think so. And, and uh, this is where you count on your veterans to, you know, you go on the road for the first time, which is kind of, uh, we haven't done that here. So it's a, uh, to put it in your, in your terms, it's a great gauge to see what kind of maturity we have on our team and how they handle their business. Final two. Bill? There were a lot of questions even 10 days ago about this team, then you lose West. <coughs> how ready? Do you think this team is for the season? Well, they were pretty ready. I like where we're at, especially after today's practice. And, and uh, I like how they responded to Braxton's injury. So I think we're pretty ready. And final question, Steve. Yeah, two things. First of all, Miller being a captain and not able to play in the games, that's a kind of an interesting dynamic. How does that factor with travel squad? And I presume he'll be at every one of your games. Will you have to make an allotment for him? And that's – one less guy you can travel, or how does that work? Yeah, the, I tried that before. They don't let you take. <laughs> they don't go for no, that. No, they don't go for that. So he'd be one of the 70 if he can go. He won't be able to go this time because of his. Um, but there'll be times we have to make that decision. And, and just other thing, JT Barrett, is there a chance that we could talk to him before he makes his first start? No, we're going to let him go play a game.